afternoon. My name is Melanie Darling, and I am the administrative law judge that is will be presiding today. To my right on the dais is Commission President Michael Peavy, the assigned Commissioner Mike Florio, and the co-assigned administrative law judge Kevin Dudney. Before we begin, a couple of safety points. Today's date is May 14th, 2014, and this is the scheduled time and place for the hearing on the proposed settlement of the Commission's investigation into the rates, operations, practices, services, and facilities of Southern California Edison Company and San Diego Gas and Electric Company associated with the San Onofre Nuclear Generation Station Units 2 and 3, which we will refer to as SONGS. The proceeding I-121013 was opened pursuant to Public Utilities Code Section 455.5 after an extended outage at SONGS commencing January 31, 2012, following discovery of a leak in one of the new steam generators in Unit 3. The Commission has added in other SONGS-related proceedings, including review of recorded SONGS expenditures for 2012 and 2013, calculation of the replacement power costs, and review of the original costs of the replacement steam generators. Edison is the operator of SONGS, but as co-owners, both Edison and SDG&E have recorded and reported their expenses associated with the operations at SONGS after the January 31st, uh, 2012 shutdown. During the course of this proceeding, thousands of pages of testimony and other evidence have been reviewed. We conducted more than three weeks of evidentiary hearings and examined dozens of witnesses. Phase three, which was to examine the replacement steam generator expenses and associated issues, has not yet been set for hearing. On April 3, 2014, six parties, Edison, SDG&E, the Office of Ratepayer Advocates, Utility Reform Network, Friends of the Earth, and the California Coalition of Utility Employees submitted a motion asking the Commission to adopt a settlement of all issues in this proceeding. Prior to filing the motion, the settling parties convened a settlement conference with notice to all parties as required by our rules of practice and procedure. Based on the opening comments, other parties have since expressed general support for the settlement agreement. The California Large Energy Consumers Association, the Alliance for Retail Energy Markets filed jointly with the Direct Access Coalition, Joint Minority Parties, and World Business Academy. Well, I take exception to that. Factually, that is incorrect. The parties were not invited to participate. Mr. Was, but I, I just want to put my objection on the. If you're going to make a record, I'm going to object when you do so. Thank you. I will give you. You may have your comments. When it's your turn to speak, Mr. Gary. I'm objecting to your statements on the record at the appropriate time. When you make an objectionable statement, I have a right to object, and I uh, interpose the objection. You incorrectly stated that the that there was the settlement was in compliance with Rule 12. All right, moving on. It is not an all-party settlement. Parties opposing the settlement are the Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility, Women's Energy Matters, the Coalition to Decommission San Onofre, and Ruth Henricks. Therefore, pursuant to the Commission's Rule 12.3, the purpose of this hearing is to examine material contested issues of fact related to the settlement agreement and the motion. For those of you watching our webcast from the affected communities in Southern California, there will be a community information meeting about the settlement proposal scheduled on June 16th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Costa Mesa Community Center. You're cordially invited to attend and to hear presentations about the proposal and have an opportunity to comment or ask a question. Please contact the Public Advisor's Office for any additional information. It has also uh, listed the details in the All Commission's right. calendar. Um, Mr. Hendricks, you've distributed a, a set of documents here. It does not conform with our... I'm sorry, Mr. Aguirre. Uh, you wanted this Mark Hendricks 1. Um, the difficulty with this uh, stack of different documents is that under Rule 13.7 should have been a table of contents. Each page should be marked individually so that the parties can all um, move efficiently to it. So um, we'll see how it goes, but it's set up to um, make the um, proceeding last unnecessarily long as we all flip through pages. So uh, to the extent that you practice before this commission, you should familiar familiarize yourself with Rule 13.7 and as to how exhibits should be presented. I think everyone should familiarize yourself with the rules of the Commission and comply with them, and I agree with that. So... May I please ask you now, uh, Mr. Lissinger, if you will? Well, do you wish to have this exhibit marked, Mr. Aguirre? It's been marked. It's been marked as a... No, it has not been marked no, on the record. It was not marked on the record. 
Oh, Mark, in the record is in Henrik's one, please. Right. It's not your direction. It's the judge's direction. Right. So, Mr. Gary, you need. I was directing my comments to you. All right. Henrik's one is marked for identification. Would you, Mr. Lissinger, would you mind turning to uh, seven page 10 and section 3.23 of the agreement? Section 3.23 of the agreement. Okay. It says here, SCE had determined that Mitsubishi made errors in designing. You see that? Yes. Where in the record is there support for the errors in designing that Southern Cal Edison determined were made? I believe these general recitals were just provided as general uh, background, um, and uh, that's what we are attempting to accomplish uh, with that statement. Sir, the question before you, and I'll repeat it, where in the record, w let me repeat it, where in the record is there support for the factual assertion that SCE determined there were errors in designing of the steam generators that were deployed at San Onofre? I'm not aware of the uh, specific uh, spot in the record, if any. In fact, sir, you are aware that there is nothing in the record that supports the factual assertion in 3.23 that SCE determined there were errors in the design of the steam generators that were deployed at the San Onofre Nuclear Station, correct? Again, I'm not aware if there is anything in the record on it. My understanding of the general recitals is they were provided as general background for the settlement agreement. Right, right. but I'm not asking about why you provided the recitals. I'm asking you a very specific and straightforward question. If you would please answer it, I'd appreciate it much, Lee. Do you know, and let me throw that, can you please tell us where, if anywhere, there is any factual support for the factual assertion that SCE determined there were errors in the design of the steam of the replacement steam generators that were deployed at San Onofre? I cannot. Okay. What errors? Let me throw that. Did SCE investigate whether SCE made errors in the design of the steam generators that were deployed at the San Onofre nuclear power station as part of the steam replacement program approved by the PUC in December 15th of 2005? SCE conducted exhaustive uh, investigations uh, utilizing outside experts. We did that in order to pursue our restart and to uh, build our case for making a claim uh, against Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. And will you tell us, sir, where in this record the product of your investigation into whether SCE officials had any responsibility for design errors for the replacement steam generators that were deployed in the San Onofre nuclear power plant, where in this record is any such information? Uh, I, same quote, same answer, I cannot. Now, you will admit that Southern Cal Edison was involved in the design process for the replacement steam generators as early as November of 2004 when Mr. Nunn sent his letter to the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries Corporation, correct? Uh, I would only say that Southern California Edison was not involved in the design. We contracted the design of the steam generator out to MHI. Uh, as an owner, uh, we exercised 
uh, oversight uh, of that design as would normally be expected of an owner uh, and the NRC. Okay. Now, were you employed uh, and working on the replacement steam generator program in 2004 as an agent, officer, or employee of Southern Cal Edison? I was not. Were you in any way involved in overseeing, directing, managing the replacement steam program for the San Onofre plant in the year 2004? I was not. What is the basis of your personal knowledge of Southern Cal Edison executives, agents, officers, employees' involvement in the design process? Uh, reviewing past materials uh, as we investigated uh, causes such that we could uh, come up with a restart plan and pursue that, and also investigating causes uh, uh, to make our claim against Mitsubishi. Uh, uh, we read uh, past documents uh, associated uh, with the uh, design phase of the project. And are those documents in the record available to the Commission to evaluate the reasonableness of this proposed settlement, sir? Uh, all of those documents are not. Sir, did you participate personally in any of the settlement meetings that led up to the proposed settlement? I did not. How is the Commission to make up its mind? Let me throw that. Did you participate in any discussions in which the strength of the ratepayer case that Southern California executive executives had, had it un, acted unreasonably in connection with the deployment of the steam generators at San Onofre, did you participate in any such discussion in which the strength of the case was discussed during the course of the settlement discussions? Your Honor, I'll interpose an objection and direct the witness not to divulge any privileged attorney-client communications. And, and oh, attorney-client privileged communications. Okay, we'll exclude any client, attorney-client. Oh, well, wait a second. The only person that represented Southern California Edison at the settlement conferences was an attorney. Is that true? Who are you directing the question to? I, I'm directing the question at the witness, Your Honor. We were represented by Mr. Wiseman, yes. The question before you, sir, is was your attorney, Mr. Wiseman, the only representative of Southern California Edison who attended the settlement negotiations? Uh, to my knowledge, he was the only one present. And the only source of information that you have about what took place at the settlement negotiations are attorney-client privilege communications that you received from Mr. Weissman, true? That is correct. Now, did you have any discussions with staff members during the pendency of the settlement negotiations about what was being discussed there? Again, Your Honor, I'll interpose the same objection to the extent I, I'll direct the witness to exclude from his answer any attorney-client communications. And I'm also not clear on the question. When you say staff members, what staff? Who staff members? Edison Southern staff California, members? his staff. Okay. His staff. Did you talk with your staff members about the settlement discussions while they were taking place outside the presence of Mr. Weissman? I'll repeat my objection. Objection is sustained. Outside the presence of Mr. Weissman, did you have any discussions about the settlement negotiations outside the presence of Mr. Weissman with any staff members of Southern California Edison? There are obviously many attorneys at Southern California Edison. Moreover, to the extent that, and I don't know if this is true, anybody repeated information that constituted a, an attorney-client communication that would be privileged as well. So I'm simply directing the witness to exclude from his answer any material that is covered by the attorney-client privilege. Is this normal for him to give a speaking objection like that and for him to direct what the witness does or doesn't do? Is that normal here? Because yes. that's, oh, okay, because yes. that's not the normal process. Most places the attorney doesn't stand up and in the middle of the examination do this, but that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll adjust to the procedure An, an, an attorney is in entitled to an counsel? object to a question. Well, that's uh, not an objection. That's a long yeah. speaking objection. No. That's what we call a speaking is, objection. No. And we don't Mr. usually Geary, check. The judge I don't know what, you, what you're used the, to, Mr. Geary, but 
What's happening is appropriate. You've posed a question. He has articulated an objection that is a privilege objection. I have sustained that objection, and the, in, and the witness is directed to response to respond, bearing in mind the sustained portion of that objection. What's, okay, let me, let me restate the question so we're clear. Forget about any attorney. Any attorney, put that out of your mind. Did you have any discussion with any S Southern California Edison uh, agent, officer, employee who was not an attorney about what was taking place at the settlement negotiations? Just yes or no? Yes. Okay. At any time in any such of those discussions that you had, was there any discussion about the strength of the case that ratepayers have against Southern California Edison that its officials acted unreasonably in connection with the deployment of the steam generators, the replacement steam generators of San Onofre? Your Honor, uh, another objection. If the uh, the, the question seems to be asking Excuse for... Excuse me, Your Honor. No, uh, its Mr. objection Gary, is no. ambiguous, compound to no. general narrative, misquotes, leading all, argumentative... First of all, Mr. Gary, you, not a speaking objection. you are out of order. He has gotten three words out of his mouth, so you will remain quiet while he lodges his objection, and then we will rule on it. Yes, Mr. Weissman. Uh, if the question is seeking uh, the witness to divulge what was discussed in the settlement negotiations... I would instruct the witness not to answer, as that would violate the Commission's Rule 12. 12.6. Are you making the objection for him, Your Honor? I, he made the objection. He and said Rule 12. You said Rule 12. Article 12 includes Rule 12 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And 6 is the applicable rule. And so, yes, the objection is sustained. It's a yes or no. That's all it asked, is a yes or no. It didn't ask for the content of the communication. Just said, did you have a discussion about the strength of the case that was that against S Southern Cal Edison that ratepayers have that they acted unreasonably? This is the subject matter. Was that subject matter discussed? You're asking about the substance of settlement negotiations. I'm asking about the subject matter, not the substance. There's, is there a distinction? You're asking of whether okay. there was a discussion on a particular matter okay. of substance in the settlement agreement. So as far as the commission is concerned, Southern California Edison has offered nothing to the Commission that would allow the Commission to make an intelligent decision about, this, about what SCE thinks the strength of the case that it acted unreasonably. The question is not, you don't direct a question to the witness, Mr. Litzinger, about what the Commission thinks. No, so I'm you a, need to reframe your question, Mr. Geary. Oh, so now you're objecting to my questions. It's, it's an inappropriate okay. question. You don't get to ask Mr. Litzinger what no, the Commission thinks. I'm asking Mr. Litzinger about what he thinks. About so what reframe the, the question. Thinks. Mr. Litzinger, would you agree that you can point to nothing in the record that would allow the Commission to make an intelligent decision about what Southern California Edison thought the strength of the case against it was that it acted unreasonably in the way that it deployed the steam generators at San Onofre, true? Do you understand the question? I don't think I followed that let me, question. Let me go over it with you slowly. You admit that there's nothing that you can provide the commission about what Southern California Edison thought the strength of the case against it was. True or not true? Again, it was in the record? It's in the record. There's nothing in the record that where Southern California Edison has explained what it thought the strength of the case against it was that led to the settlement. True? True, not in the record. Not in the record, okay. Now, you're familiar with the fact that Southern California Edison objected to any information. Actually, let me throw that. You're familiar with the anti-vibration bar team, correct? I am. Were you a member of that team? I was not. Do you know who was a member of that team? I don't recall. Have you made it? Did you know at some point who the members were? I read the names and where did uh, you in read past the names? documents. Where did you read the names? In past documents. And were those documents provided to the commission for an evaluation of the strength of the case that was uh, that the ratepayers have against Southern California Edison that they'd acted unreasonably in connection with the deployment of the steam generators? Uh, 
those documents were not provided to my knowledge. Did you sign any declarations that have been provided to the commission in which Southern California Edison discusses the strength of the case against Southern California Edison that ratepayers have that it acted unreasonably? I have not signed any declarations. Have you provided any timesheets or time records illustrating your attorney's review of that question to the commission? I have not. Is there anything that you know of this before the commission that would establish the sufficiency of the settling parties investigation and to the extent to which SCE was responsible for the RSG design errors? Did you repeat that question? I will. Is there anything before the commission to establish the sufficiency of the settling parties investigation and to the extent to which Southern Cal Edison was responsible for the RSG design errors? There is not. Okay. Now, did you conduct an investigation that if the commission were to find that Southern California Edison acted unreasonably, that it would be that the potential recovery to rate payers would not just be the cost of the replacement steam generators, but it would be the full cost of the failure of those generators rendering the plant unable to produce additional power? Did you conduct any investigation along those lines? Objection. I direct the witness to exclude from his answer any attorney-client communications. I agree. Exclude any. I'm talking about where you got your financial people to sit down and look at the question of if our unreasonable behavior of deploying the steam generators after we were informed of design issues and the commission were to decide that we acted unreasonably because of that, it could affect not only just the recovery of the replacement steam generator costs, but it could affect our ability to recover for the base plant, for example. I object to the format. Any investigation? Any investigation into those issues? I object to the form of the question and reiterate my privilege objection. It is compound. Break it apart. I thought you didn't go with technical objections here, Your Honor. Compounds a technical objection. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I thought we only went according to the rules with objections that affect the substantial justice of the parties. And now you're interposing a technical objection. I don't know what kinds of rules you think you're operating under here, Mr. Aguirre, but we have a set of rules of practice and procedure. We have a customary way of moving along. You've asked a question which is unintelligible due to its complexity. I'm asking you to break it apart. Simple question. Can the court reporter, commission reporter, please read back my question? Never mind. Never mind. I'll leave you at that. That's all right. We'll start again. You have it written down, I think, in your write-up. Well, Your Honor, it must be able to look through my computer and be able to tell me that. No, I'm watching you read. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, you know, that's very, you know, Your Honor, it's, you know. So why don't you try reframing the question? Okay. I'll go with that. Okay. Let me put it, let me shift the topic a little bit here. You understand that the, when you came forward with this proposed settlement, that the commission was going to have to decide if it was reasonable in light of the whole record, it was lawful, and that it was in the public interest. Correct? Yes. Now, you have heard it argued, no doubt, by the opponents, that what's in the public interest is to get to the bottom of whether or not Southern Cal Edison was or was not unreasonable after it was put on notice of the design flaws in the U-Bend region that produced greater steam quality than in past designs. Is that a question? Yes. Do you agree with that? Does he agree with everything that you just said? Yes. Again, Your Honor, I'm sorry. What is this? What is this doing right here? What is that? What do we call it? It's called an objection on the grounds that your question is extremely confusing and wasn't actually posed as a question. You are violating the fundamental principles of due 
process by letting this attorney act as the judge in the case. And that's what you're letting this happen. You can do it if you want to, but that is highly improper for him to do that. You're entitled to your opinion, Mr. Aguirre. You state a question which was not entirely comprehensible, and counsel interjected an objection. This is the ordinary course of litigation, Mr. Aguirre. Your Honor, there's lawyers listening to this all over the state of California. And if you want to take the position that what he's doing is proper, that's fine. And there's probably judges listening to it as well. That's fine. Let's go back. Mr. Lissinger, let's go back. You don't get to – Mr. Aguirre, let me just make something very clear. You don't get to run this proceeding. I'm not. He is. Mr. Weissman is. No, you are interrupting the judge. You interrupt counsel. You interrupt witnesses. You have been framing unintelligible questions to which objections are being interposed. You need to pull your questions together and ask clear and concise questions within the scope of this proceeding. Right now, have you withdrawn your last question to which there is an outstanding objection? Yeah, I withdrew it. Okay, let's go back. You are familiar with the fact that the AVB design team reported that the proposed design was creating greater steam quality in the U-Bend region, true? There were numerous issues that our design team brought up with Mitsubishi, and Mitsubishi repeatedly provided assurances when we raised those issues. The question before you, sir, is are you familiar with the fact that the AVB design team reported to Southern California Edison that the design that was underway for the replacement steam generators was creating greater steam quality in the U-Bend region of the generators? Objection, Your Honor. This is beyond the scope of this hearing. Sustained. Excuse me, Your Honor. They make specific reference to this issue in the factual findings. They talk about design errors. This is a design error. All I'm doing is examining them on that. We are looking at material contested issues of fact. This is. This is a material contested issue of fact. You're contesting whether there were design errors or not? I'm contesting whether there was an evaluation made of the claim against Southern Cal Edison that the commission can evaluate one way or the other the strength of that claim in deciding whether this is a fair settlement, which is what their fiduciary obligation requires them. May I be heard, Your Honor? Are you finished, Mr. Geary? Yeah. Sounded like it. Mr. Weissman? It appears to us that counsel is attempting to transform this hearing on the reasonableness of the settlement into Phase 3 and an evaluation of the prudence of Edison's conduct. That's not appropriate. Not so. All I'm asking is this. We can't try that issue here, and we're not going to try that issue. But the commission must have sufficient information in front of it to make an evaluation of whether this was a fair settlement of that claim. That claim is active. The claim that they acted unreasonably after they learned of the AVB design problems, from the AVB design team, the design problems that created greater negative void or higher steam quality in the U-Bend regions, and they proceeded with it anyway. That's a claim. And we're being asked, the rate payers are being asked to settle that claim and to compromise that claim. We can't try that claim now. But we can find out if there was an evaluation made of that claim, and the commission has an obligation to find that out. And so we have to ask him these questions. You've asked him twice, and he's answered twice, as I recall. No. Well, he hasn't answered yet. He didn't give a responsive answer. I asked him the question. The question is, let me just ask him. Sir, do you, after the design, I'm sorry, you are familiar with the fact that the AVB design team reported that there was greater steam quality in the U-Bend region for the new designs of the steam generators that were going to be used as replacement generators at Santa Nofre. True? I renew my objection on scope. He's not asking the question. It's either, it's, come on. Mr. Aguirre, come on, to use your phrase. You need to step back and allow other counsel to have their opportunity to respond. Okay? I have an outstanding question. There is an objection that was in the process of being articulated, and once again, you've interrupted Mr. Weissman. He has as much opportunity to get to the microphone as you do. Mr. Weissman. Your Honor, that question that was just posed goes to the scope of Phase 3. It's not within the scope of this hearing today. The question that was posed was, what was known by Edison about the response of 
people at Edison to statements allegedly made by the AVB design team. That's a prudence review question. Not true. I just asked, had he heard that? That's all I asked. Had he heard that? The, there is no evidence in the record regarding the AVB design team report that I recall. You think that it's there and you want to make an argument about it in your comments that there is an inconsistent position here? You are free to argue that the, that the settlement does not, is not reasonable in light of the whole record. But there is no, you only have about 20 minutes. Do you really want to spend the rest of your time talking about the AVB design yes, team or do you want to talk about settlement and facts, this, Your Honor, material facts, Your not Honor, every fact, material, but Your Honor, material. You have to know whether this is a reasonable compromise of that claim. You can't approve the settlement unless you know that the parties reached a reasonable compromise. I have to ask as a foundation if that was ever considered. That's all I'm trying to get to. Was that ever considered as part of the settlement? That's what I'm asking. And they're making comments in the, in the recitals that they did discover that there was a design flaw. Right. So move on. No. They've admit, they have said there is a design flaw. That, is that a material issue? Yes. Right. The standard, because it doesn't say when. Okay. It doesn't Mr. say Gary, what. The standard for review is reasonable in light of the whole record. That's the whole settlement. Your Honor, you want, no, the whole record is not the whole settlement. It's also the settlement is taken as a whole. No, but the record is taken as a whole, and the question right. is this. There is a claim against Southern Cal Edison by ratepayers. You were unreasonable. You put in defective steam generators. You knew ahead of time that there was information. You did not get a 50-59 stat, uh, uh, certification from the, from the federal right. government. Now you you're way acting, beyond scope, Mr. No, Your Honor, no, because that's the claim. We have a right to say what our claim is. There was a statutory That's violation. Did they discuss that? How can you evaluate that claim unless we get to whether they discuss that issue? That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to try the issue. I'm just asking him, did you discuss whether or not Southern California Edison's failure to get a 5059 license amendment was part of the claim that the ratepayers had against Southern Cal Edison? Your Honor, um, anything that was objection, outside, outside Rule 12.6. I'm going to appeal. I appeal to the commission for you to make inquiry of the commission right now uh, because uh, uh, and, and to ask the commission to whether to stay, sustain or not sustain your objection. First of all, I'm sustaining the objection on two grounds. One, it's been asked and answered, I believe. Second of all, it's outside the scope of this proceeding whether there was what interactions Edison is it, it's meeting its obligations it's with, the nuclear, with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. No, Your Honor, you're missing the point. There's a claim against... I understand your no, point. No, you don't, because you just said you don't understand it. What you said means you don't understand it. The claim is the ratepayers have the potential claim to not have to pay for the rate base because of the unreasonableness of deploying defective steam generators. I'm asking the witness, was that a consideration in the settlement? Objection, Your Honor. If he's asking whether that was the subject of the negotiation. No. Was that a consideration? May I finish my objection? Oh, my gosh. Mr. Gary, you need to conduct yourself in a professional manner, or we, or we will end your questioning right now. So let's Your Honor, be don't clear. Threaten me. I'm not threatening don't you. Threaten me. I'm not threatening you. I'm pointing out that you are no, being. You're, you the are. professionalism here, is, let me say whether they're non No, you is. need to stop talking, Mr. Gary. Mr. Weissman, would you like to complete your sentence? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if the question is asking whether that subject to which he alluded was the subject of discussions in the settlement negotiation, we object under Rule 12.6. No, I'm not asking that question. If, if the, the question is asking whether that was the subject that was discussed with counsel, I object on the grounds of the attorney-client privilege. That's not the question. Let's move on. I will move on and just ask it this way. Did you understand that the ratepayers were making a claim that Southern Cal Edison acted unreasonably in deploying the steam generators? I reviewed the positions of all the parties. I don't, I don't know that the ratepayers themselves made an actual claim, so I'm not really following your question. You, did, did you, read, you didn't read the, the protests that you're, were... Mr. Geary, your question was unclear. When you say ratepayers, are you talking about ratepayer organizations? And if so, which one? Did you didn't read the uh, ratepayer protests in this case that asserted, for example, like Ms. Hendricks, that asserted that uh, Southern Cal Edison acted unreasonably in deploying the steam generators? 
I realize that a lot of people have called into question our prudence. Okay. We believe that we acted prudently based on our review, and we were prepared to litigate that. Okay. So we that's... settled the case, uh, and we believe that disallowing the steam generators and the costs associated with pursuing restart, the $100 million in O&M of incremental inspection and repair costs, is a reasonable outcome that falls uh, within the range of possibilities had we been found imprudent. But okay. we believe that we were prudent in our actions. All right. Then we agree. Where is that in the record? Where is what you just said that, 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 that verifies that you actually went through that process? Where is that in the record? Before the commission so they can evaluate whether, in fact, you did that. It is not in the record. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. When was the con – what conference did you attend after the uh, – after you all reached the settlement? And uh, what conference did you attend with the parties that had not been invited to the settlement? Object to the form of the question. Would you like me to elaborate? Yes, please. It's an extremely confusing question. First of all, no settlement was reached <laughs> and no settlement was signed prior to the convening of the settlement conference. Oh, Second Your of Honor, all, all argument. parties. Oh, this is, this is argument. You can't allow this. He's supposed to object. This is my cross-examination. I did object, and I requested the opportunity to articulate the basis for my objection. objection. And he, yes, Mr. Weissman, your objection is that the question is unintelligible? Yes. Your Honor, you offered that to him. He did. That wasn't his objection, but that's okay. It was his objection. He no. said the question was confusing. Okay, let me go back. You need to reframe you, the question. You heard Her Honor say this, this, this afternoon that there was a conference held. Do you remember, remember Her Honor said there was a conference held? No. I said there was a notice of a settlement conference to make no, sure that your question is held. No, you said there was a conference held. That's what you said. Don't misstate my – I'm not misstating. You are. Mr. Gary, if you're going to use my words, you're going to use them accurately or not at all, the period. It will reflect what you said. Yes, it will. Twice. Yes, it will. Okay. Prior to filing the motion, the settling parties convened a settlement conference with notice to all parties as required by our rules of practice and procedure. Was there a conference? Did you attend a conference after the March 20 letter was sent, the ex-party communication was sent, to uh, Judge Darling. I did not personally attend the settlement conference. Okay, let me, uh, let me ask you the question again. Did you attend any conference with any of the non-settling parties after March 20th? No. Okay. And did you – and you don't – do you know if any such conference was held? The only conference I'm aware of is the settlement conference that was noticed. Let me ask you this. I asked you first, though, did you, how do you know that there was a settlement conference held? There if was a notice. If you weren't in attendance, besides the notice, how do you know it was actually held? But, but, sir, Gary, you need to ask one question, not three. How do you know that there was a conference held if you didn't attend it? The conference was noticed. It was reported back to me. Who reported uh, it back to you? I don't recall precisely who, but uh, I got several reports uh, uh, that the, uh, the conference uh, was conducted. At that conference that you understood was conducted, were the terms of the proposed settlement open to uh, modification? Objection, Your Honor, Rule 12.6. Stained. No, I'm saying at the conference. Was there anything said at the conference to the people there that the uh, – All right. Let's 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 have an offer of proof. Where do you think you're going with this line of questioning, Mr. Gary? What is it – what material issue of fact are you attempting to reach with this line? with Rule 12. No. I want to – I'm asking what – that's a conclusion of law. 
That's a question of whether... Did they meet the standards? My question is, where are you going in terms of a material contested issue of fact in the settlement? That is a material contested issue of fact. Whether there was a conference is a fact, and it's material. Procedure... Because if it wasn't, because you can't approve it unless there was such a conference, that's a material issue, and it's a factual issue, and I'm asking about it. May I be heard, Your Honor? Mr. Weissman. Under the Commission's rules, what is discussed at the settlement conference is a confidential settlement communication under Rule 12.6. I'm not asking what was discussed at the settlement conference. I'm asking what was discussed at the meeting that they called in which they announced that there was a settlement and the terms of the settlement couldn't be changed. And I'm asking you, Mr. Aguirre, to give me an offer of proof that there is relevance to a material issue of contested issue of fact. Because it says Rule 12... In the settlement agreement. It says, prior to signing any settlement, the settling party shall convene at least one conference with notice and opportunity to participate provided to all parties for the purpose of discussing settlements in the proceeding. And you can't... And the question was, was that complied with? That's a contested issue in the case, and underlying that are the contested issues of fact. And you have asked him whether he was there, and he said no. You need to move on, Mr. Aguirre. If you want to make an argument... Oh, my word. In your comments, that there was an... That the notice which is on... In docket is... Was a false representation, then you may make that representation and make that argument. But I... It is not relevant to the purpose of this hearing, which is to determine the underlying statements of fact in this settlement agreement. What hap... What is the effect of the agreement? What are the provisions of the agreement? I'm sorry, Your Honor. I don't... I've never heard of such a thing. I have to say, that is the most unintelligible analysis that I've ever heard ever about the process for approving settlement, having been a lawyer for 40 years and been class counsel for numerous very large class settlements, going back and looking at the Supreme Court decisions on their... On their... On their... On precedent. Well, Mr. Aguirre, you are entitled... You are entitled to... No, I was in the middle of saying something. I'm sorry. No, I'm tired because this is not a fruitful line of inquiry. Let's take this... Do you agree... Go on to a question which will deal with a contested issue of fact. Okay. Did you... Do you agree that there were some opposing parties who were not invited to the settlement conference? I believe all parties were invited to the settlement conference. And when did the settlement conferences begin? Objection. The question is ambiguous when he refers to the term settlement conference. If he... Are you referring to the March 27th meeting? Excuse me, Your Honor. He's asking for a clarification of the question. That's proper. Okay. He's asking for a clarification of the question. I said, when did the settlement conferences begin? They were held on March 27th. I do not recall the precise time. When did the settlement conferences begin between Southern California Edison, Office of Rate Payer Advocacy, and TURN? Define conference, Mr. Aguirre. When did the conferences begin? Conference. Define conference. Do you mean the one that's required by our rules, or do you mean informal negotiations and discussions between parties? I mean... I mean, when did you start talking with the Office of Rate Payer Advocate and the other settling parties? I'm sorry. When did you start talking with TURN and the Office of Rate Payer Advocate about settling the case? We had reached out to TURN. It was late in May of 2013, and I believe the initial discussions were held mid to late June of 2013. So for... This... We're in May of 2014. So a year ago, you reached out. Who'd you reach out to? I believe Mr. Weissman reached out to TURN's counsel, Mr. Friedman. Okay. And then the party started meeting in July, correct? Of 2013. In June. In June of 2013. And they started exchanging settlement agreements, drafts, starting in July of 2013, correct? I don't know when drafts were exchanged. Okay. If I told you that you responded to a data request and said that the drafts began to be distributed in July, would that refresh your... Of 2013, would that refresh your recollection? I don't recall that data request coming to me. Now, while you were having those 
secret negotiations that some of the settling parties were not invited to, some of the opponents were not invited to participate. You also were having ex parte meetings with members of the commission, true? I object to the form of the question. Why don't you ask the last part if that's what you want. Okay. Go ahead. Answer the last part. I'll doubt what Your Honor said. Whether I had ex parte meetings with the commissioners? Was Southern California Edison having ex parte meetings with commissioners while the secret negotiations were taking place? The only ex parte communications I had with commissioners was following the phase one proposed decision and it was noticed. Were other Southern California Edison agents, officers, employees having ex parte communications with the commissioners during the time of the secret negotiation? Object to the form of the question. It's argumentative, but I'm going to let that part go. But after this next question, Mr. Geary, you're going to have to give me an offer of proof of how this is going to lead to relevant evidence related to material contested issues of fact. Were you? Or were they? Southern California Edison has ex parte communications with commissioners on multiple matters all of the time. How many times have you spoken to Mr. Peavy since November of 2012? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. Sustained. Let me give you my offer of proof. It's our contention that the representation by the commission that there was going to be an investigation into the reasonableness of Southern California Edison's deployment of the defective steam generators was a promise of an investigation with the intent not to perform it. It is our contention that you, Ms. Darling, Judge Darling, entered a ruling that put the investigation off into the remote future in order to avoid any such investigation. It's our position that Mr. Peavy helped to orchestrate this settlement through Mr. Friedman and others, and it wasn't a settlement negotiation. It was a meeting to figure out how not to have the reasonableness investigation. The rulings that you made prohibiting any kind of discovery into the relevant issues, when the settlement was announced, the coordinated press releases that falsely stated from Mr. Florio and Mr. Peavy that the parties had settled, which was picked up as part of the blitzkrieg in which the rate payers were misinformed that they were going to get a $1.4 billion refund, was a collusive, not bona fide basis for this settlement. And we have a right to try to develop that record, which you are not permitting us to do. And let me just ask this. Let me just ask Mr. Peavy a question. No, you have a question to me. Did you have any discussions with any parties about the settlement process while it was taking place, sir? Will you put that on the record? And same with Mr. Florio. Will you put that on the record? Mr. Geary, you were in the middle of an offer of proof. You segued into trying to interrogate people who are not under oath or as witnesses in this proceeding. So let me just stop you here. They have an obligation to put that on the record. First of all, your offer of proof is that you think that by exploring this line of questioning that you may develop some evidence of collusion. That is not a material contested issue of fact as it relates to the settlement. If you want to make some kind of allegation of bias, this is not the proceeding to do that. Of course it is. This is where you have to develop it. No, not under the parameters of this hearing under our rules. You have other procedural remedies available, and this isn't it. So you may move on, Mr. Geary. One of the basis for you not to find the settlement to be fair, legal, and reasonable is if there was collusion. You are now interfering with there is an obligation. You are fiduciaries. Mr. Peavy, you are a fiduciary. Mr. Florio, you are a fiduciary. You have an obligation to put on the record if you had any knowledge of the settlement negotiations or in any way participated in them while they were underway. Did you or I'm asking either one of you and both of you, did you or did you not have such information and such participation? Your questions are out of order, Mr. Geary. They are out of scope of this proceeding. What's out of order is this proceeding. No. Yes, that's what's out of order. The purpose of this proceeding is to get to explore contested material issues of fact in the settlement agreement as to its terms, provisions, and implementation. 
you have other mechanisms, and if you're, as a lawyer, I'm sure you're avail able to make use of them, but this okay. is not it. Let me so you may up. move on okay. within scope because you've got about three minutes. Okay. Did you, did you, Mr. L L Lissinger, you are, you're not just the president of the company, but you're also a shareholder, are you not? I am. Do you live in the southern, uh, in SC East territory? I do. Okay. Now, when you announced this uh, settlement, uh, your, the value of your stock shot up about $160,000, true? Objection, relevance. It's Sustained. Relevant. It's relevant to his testimony. He's under oath. His credibility is at issue. Whether he's making money off of this settlement is an issue that you have to take into consideration. The, step, the moment he put his hand up and swore, his credibility was at issue. This is a proper uh, financial motivation cross-examination question that any court would allow. Well, it's amazing how you're able to jump to the conclusion of what any and every court would do. Unfortunately, that isn't the, the rules that are operating in this commission. You have a narrow scope here, and you have exceeded it. You may okay, move so on. So you're not going to make him answer the question of whether his stock value shot up $160,000 the, the few days after this announcement was made? You offer me some proof as to how that leads to a relevant con uh, evidence as to a contested because issue of fact. Because it goes to the fact that he wants this approved not because it's fair to the ratepayers, but because he's going to make money off of it, as the others are. That's why. And I know I, I, mm -hmm. no, I, I stand with the commissioners that they don't realize that, pe that this is about people making money and the, and the ratepayers having to pay for it. And if that comes as a shock to the commissioners, I'm, I'm really sorry that, this is, that people are uh, that naive. Seriously. You're free to make your argument in briefs, Mr. Aguirre. Okay. Uh, last question. Southern California Edison has reported that after it took San Onofre out of commission, that its earnings went up as a result. Is that true? Reported where, Mr. Aguirre? Reported in a analyst meeting that Mr. Lissinger participated in in November of 2013. Is that true, sir, that Southern California Edison through you reported to the financial analyst community that San Onofre, or that Southern California Edison earnings went up as a result of taking San Onofre out of commission? Did you do that? Our previous guidance to investor analysts were based on no return on investment at San Onofre. Uh, given this settlement uh, included a debt level return on the debt portion of our financial structure for the base plant and half of a preferred return on the preferred uh, portion of the financial structure, uh, we provided our analysts with a small estimate of earnings increase if the settlement uh, were to be approved. And, and so the answer to my question is yes. Yes. Thank you. Does that conclude your questions, Mr. Aguirre? Well, it, I have many more questions, but I know that I'm being restricted. We're spending three hours on a $3 billion right. settlement. All right, so the answer is, is no, Mr. Aguirre? No, the answer is no or yes. I'm making my record. No, you're not making a record. A billion dollars an hour. No. You spent five days on, on or seven Mr. days Gary. on the entire process, and I renew my objection. This is an inadequate time, an inadequate review, inadequate record, and I renew my objection to the shortness of the hearing. It is not a bona fide evidentiary hearing, and I again request that you allow for a proper review with proper findings, proper basis for those findings, as I have already indicated in our prior objections to these proceedings. Duly noted. All right. Uh, Mr. Weissman. Yes, Your Honor. In, uh, any further rec uh, redirect? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, comments? The only comment I would make is that I came here today hoping to be educated. I've, I walk out of here without a uh, that happening. I'm very disappointed by the whole uh, uh, back and forth here. I, it has not illuminated the settlement one iota. As far as turn goes, 
I think that the general knowledge my relationship with Turn is to be uh, fair, chilly, and I have never talked to Mr. Freeman on this topic during that whole time at all, period. Mr. Friedman, that's it. Sorry. What about Southern Cal Edison? Sorry. About Edison? Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not here right? to answer your so questions. Your I'm not here to answer your goddamn questions. Now shut up. Really? Shut up. Really? That's how yes. you perform yourself? Well, no, that's the way you perform no, yourself you're for hours. The question, for hours, that's you how you perform yourself. I don't have to answer Mr. any Mr. Mr. Gary, you asked me one specific question. Did I, I talk to you, Friedman? I you and I said no. Mr. Gary, if you do not stop talking right now, I'm going to cite you for Rule One. Do you hear me? Do you understand? Mr. Aguirre, do you understand? I hear you. You Thank come you. here and berate this place. That's unfair and unreasonable on your part, and you know it. No, you are the one that should be ashamed for what you've done in failing to sustain the public interest, sir, and for protecting the ratepayers, which is your sworn fiduciary duty. The travesty. Yeah. We're not a, it's a political circus for you, but the rest no, of us take our jobs seriously. This is a junk, this is a kangaroo court. That's not a political circus. Yeah. Yeah. I, should have said I, I would simply add that, uh, at numerous points on the record of this proceeding, I urged the parties to pursue settlement, and I was pleased when one was achieved. Uh, I had no part in formulating the settlement and uh, was not aware of it until uh, it was published online in the 8K. Thank you. All right. Judge Denny, are there any exhibits that uh, they're all marked and admitted, right? We're not admitting Henrik's one. All, All right. the other exhibits have been marked and admitted. All right. Um, thank you. This hearing is adjourned.